So the Kia EV9 with its 99.8 kilowatt hour battery has the ability to take up to 210 kilowatts of charge rate, but also this charge port, which opens with a push, has a party trick. It's the only thing I could find. I'm clearly not the target audience for this product, so. But yeah, neat. Shush. How do I switch this off? So welcome to the driving section uh, of this test. Now I've already driven away from the dealership and now I'm gonna take an hour long drive to a French family owned chateau, which I think is the iconic backdrop for this car. Um, I think we're gonna see how it performs on the highway. I'm not gonna go 130 kilometers an hour, first of all, because if you wanna drive in an eco-conscious manner, you don't really wanna be driving 130. Um, you wanna drive 120, the car performs much better. It's more comfortable, it's less stressful to be weaving in and out of the, the fast lane. So we'll see how it goes. Um, this is my first time driving an EV on the highway. So we'll see how it is. Hopefully all three cameras are recording. And so um, you can see that I've already driven 7.7 .7 kilometers. Um, it took me a long time to set up the cameras. So uh, yeah, that's why it says 53 minutes uh, so far and 22 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers projected. So uh, currently we're at 61% and I'm gonna set this up using the shifter here to one pedal driving. So it does regenerate quite significantly. And uh, yeah, love the fact that it presents the camera view on that beautiful display, which is now sectioned in three ways. Uh, there's a touch screen here, there's a touch screen in the middle, just simply for climate controls. And then there's your uh, digital dash in front of you. Okay. So we'll see how it performs at 120. Let's go. Beautiful. Blind spot, blind spot monitor in the mirror as well as on the display. Unsurprisingly, you may have heard this before, but this doesn't feel like I'm driving a seven seater and it doesn't look as big, in my opinion, on the outside either. So, um, I think this is how you have to look at this car. This is a car that doesn't feel like a seven seater. And also, it's a car that's extremely comfortable to drive, as well as extremely quiet. I think for the price point, this is an immense value for, for those people looking at a more than five seater, that's spacious, it's full of tech. There's so many USB, so many USB ports, I can't even count them. Um, and it does everything well. It drives well, it navigates well. It's got a 360 camera, so when you're navigating like a three point turn on a narrow road, um, it doesn't feel like you're driving a seven seater, which is awesome. And if you ask anybody, now I've hit 120 kilometers now, so I'm gonna hit this, there we go. Okay, there you go. It's keeping two car distances between me and the person in front of me. I'm now slowing down because of that. So I'm gonna navigate to the left lane. Very good. And then it resumes very smoothly, no drama, back to 120. Now, here's the first curveball. There's some sort of accident happening here. Okay, well, these tests are often steered away by events like this. So in the meantime, at least we get to talk about what it's like uh, sitting in the driving position. I wonder what happened here. 
Now, I haven't got any passengers right now, um, but if I were to have five people behind me, I could just switch to this digital mirror here, which is very cool. You can adjust the height and the zoom of that mirror there, so you can tailor it to your liking. Very cool. Everything that I see when I look around, it feels premium. It's nice leather, strong, good seat. It's got massage function um, and not sort of, not a weak one either. So I really do like it. You've got these huge mirrors on the side, so good visibility. And in terms of position where you sit, you can see all around. The pillars are very narrow for a car this size, uh, these A pillars here. So very, very good. There you go. It's come to a complete stop. It's doing it all by itself. Of course, I'm ready to take over anytime should that be needed. There you go. It's driving it all by itself. Very good. Very effortless. Very nice. The taxi driver sitting in an ID5, I think. I can't see it because I'm literally right beside it. No, this is an ID4. Yeah. <laughs> he's sitting in an ID4 and he's looking at me like, ah, is it good? Is it good? Because he can see the cameras. So it's quite nice. All right, well, this isn't the highway test that we uh, wanted, so why don't I just resume once we're out of this mess? Which, on this gorgeous display here, yeah, it's probably f another five, six minutes. Yes, I am paying attention. Apologies. <laughs> it's very interesting. I'm sitting in traffic and the other lane is moving faster. And every single one of these cars people are looking at this i think the, the design itself is just futuristic enough it's got beautiful character lines it's got the accents with the wheels and the body color working just well and the lights um the shapes uh it ju they just work they really work so i think that's one thing to consider is you are getting a very beautiful car and people are going to be looking at it one other welcome change is that there's now a shortcut button for your cameras. So you can view the rear, the front cameras, um, as well as a 360 when you're stationary um, or when you're parking, it's automatic. But when you are navigating the terrain and you're not sure what's in front of your car, this is a really good thing. So they've implemented a bumper camera, which is nice. You don't get that in every other car, especially this size, uh, surprisingly. So yeah, you've got a front camera that you can view as well. So this car, uh, alongside many other 2024 models, um, comes with the mandatory EU speed limit warning that gives you an audible chime if you go even just two, three kilometers over uh, the speed limit, but you can switch it off. Uh, one criticism that I have is that you cannot set it to off by default, but that's not Kia's fault. That's with everyone. Uh, you need to do it each and every time. It's not a bad thing. Um, I personally like using it. Um, but I know that a lot of people will frown on, upon this. Uh, it's not Kia's fault. It's not any of the car's manufacturer's fault. This is just a sign of the times. So yeah, you can. you can just hit off and now it's off. So it won't be beeping hopefully from now on. You've got these touch capacitive controls here on the dash. So you do get sort of the best of all worlds, really. You get CarPlay, but you get Kia system, which is much improved. And also is, it is able to um, plan ahead if you're doing a longer journey. Um, so it can implement charging stops as standard per most uh, electric vehicles. Uh, but you do get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So that's very nice, uh, as well as you get physical controls, capacitive controls. Um, you get lots of control on the steering wheel, as well as you, you've still got you know mirror controls here, um, which is something that 
you know, I did find a little bit annoying uh, in the Tesla. But once you set this up as a daily driver, re really you're gonna save it onto your profile anyway, which is authenticated in this particular car with a fingerprint reader. Um, so that's very nice. You get in, touch, recognizes you, sets up your driving position, your seat, your steering wheel, as well as your mirrors um, all around. And some of your preferences, but not the speed limit warning. That you have to switch off every time. How's this for a highway test? We're going a measly 24 kilometers an hour, just passing a speed trap. Uh, no, no issues there, I hope. Pretty much the theme of this car is whatever was available, they've packed it into this one. Um, I don't really consider the Tesla Model X a competitor to this one, uh, although everybody will be comparing it to it, as well as you know BMW's iX. Um, I think when you factor in the reliability of both of those brands, as well as what you're getting for the amount of money, and this is significantly cheaper, um, yeah, it gives you an unbeatable value, that's for sure. And I noticed that there's a dedicated drive mode button, which is, you know, sort of reminiscent of sports cars. Uh, this one also has a drive mode button on the steering wheel, uh, rather than placing it somewhere here around the center console area. So, um, interesting. You got Eco, Normal, Sport, which of course has a... Oh, that's magical. Uh, I first experienced this in a, a Mercedes-Benz, but hey, you now have got it in a, a, a Kia, and this has been around for a few years, actually. But yeah, the seat hugs you closer. Uh, and that also happens on the passenger seat if somebody is uh, sitting in it. And then you've got your own custom drive. So if you want, you know, the suspension to be softer, uh, softer but the accelerator response to be a little bit more active, then yeah, you can set it up to your own one, but absolutely not. I'm an eco driver. Um, that's the thing with EVs. That's my experience is, sure, you get it and you enjoy the instant acceleration, but after a few weeks, you're gonna be thinking, okay, how far can I go in this and how long do I need to charge it? And that's the crazy thing about these ones is that they can take up to, I believe, 200 or 210 kilowatts uh, charging. So you can charge it very rapidly. 28 minutes, I believe, is the uh, 10 to 80% time. And then you're good to go for another 350, 400 kilometers in ideal conditions. Of course, we're not talking about, you know, negative degrees in winter. Um, but yeah, in the summertime, yeah, you'll be able to drive another three, three and a half hours on a summer vacation with six or seven occupants um, and just go and go and then stop. You're gonna be stopping anyway. Uh, I think this is over mythicized um, how much you need to spend uh, at each rest stop because realistically, you're not just filling up and going even if you're driving an internal combustion vehicle. So. Yep. It's a different way of planning, but overall, very doable from what I've seen. Freedom. <laughs> All right, let's see. We're going to put it into sport. And we're back to... Good. So we're back to 120 kilometers an hour almost. We're gonna put it back into Eco. So similarly to um, other premium cars, this also does in real time show you what the car can see. So I can see that you got two green lines. It knows where the lane is. It also sometimes shows you what's in the next lane over um, and it shows you when somebody's moving into your lane or when you're taking over how far uh, you are. It's really nice. It, it does give you that extra sort of comfort knowing that you can see what your car's brain is seeing. So you can plan ahead with it. Yep, auto lane change, fantastically working. I just needed to indicate, nudge it over. It completed the auto lane change and then canceled the indicator. So. We're gonna do that again. We're gonna go to the right. I'm gonna nudge it. That's it. And it's doing it by itself. That's it. I can see that it knows where the lane is. 
very nice. I've also noticed when somebody is approaching me from faster lane, it does give you a very early warning so that you don't end up starting uh, a maneuver into somebody's lane, which is really nice. It's not just blind spot, it's, it's, this is way far back. Um, yeah, I would come in handy, especially if you're towing something, which this car is capable of towing up to two and a half tons. Um, another thing that may surprise you is this is one of the quietest cabins and one of the most comfortable rides I've had. It's Range Rover level comfort and now I'm going to exit the highway and we're gonna disable automatic uh, adaptive cruise control very beautifully done so oh that was a joy ride once we got out of the the construction zone and all the hassle that that has caused this was an absolute joy ride So we're now entering a city, so we're going to be driving at mostly 60, 70 kilometers an hour, because I'm pretty much going across the city. So we'll see how the consumption changes. So yeah, 23.8 as we came off the highway. We'll see what it goes down to. You feel none of the, uh, none of the bumps really. It's barely noticeable. Very serene uh, drive, I might, I might add. My heart rate is definitely lower than in most other cars. Lovely. I just let go of the accelerator and the one pedal driving, just this eye pedal max is what they call it. Um, brings me to a halt. Very nice, first time we've stopped since we set off. The whole Kia Hyundai group has changed massively over the past decade and I think one of the reasons why this car has had some criticism over in the US is because over there, Kias were deemed as cheap cars. But if you ask anybody here in Hungary what their first memory of Kia was, it was the first brand that came in and said, oh, hey, listen, we'll, you'll be fine for seven years. We'll give you seven years warranty. Like, we're that sure that the car is going to... That was unheard of at the time. So I think that's most people's first um, memory of Kia. And I think that quality has only improved since. So, I don't know anybody who complains. I've never seen a Kia on the side, of the side of the road, I'll tell you that. We're leaving the city and it's very bad roads behind. Not that I noticed any of it, which is incredible. Merging, lovely. One interesting thing is this headrest, which is netted and it's quite bouncy, but yeah, it sort of reminds me of <laughs> airplane seats. Uh, you can't really mold it in the same way you do with airplane seats, but yeah, it's really nice. Uh, and you know, on hot summer days, this sort of net is quite breathable. So a very welcome addition to this car. Overall, the feeling I get with this car is I'm sitting in a Range Rover that costs half the price of a, of a Range Rover whenever they come out with an actual uh, large electric SUV whenever they're ready. Um, it's it's just as good as its competition and in some ways it's really good and it's even better but nowhere near the price point that they're asking for it. Um, I believe this version I'm sitting in is 30 million forints which is around 76, 77,000 euros. Um, yeah, it's it's worth every penny, really. Uh, if you are looking for an electric car that's easily, that easily takes six or seven occupants, but in reality, and this is with a disclaimer, I think it's more comfortable with five people and they can sit comfortably and you can haul around uh, a lot more luggage. Six uh, is good, it's still good, but absolutely, you will not get, at this price point, in this segment, uh, comfort for this much. This much comfort for this much. Yeah, definitely.
definitely really good soundproofing as well as a very good suspension there. This stretch of road is not a nice experience in other cars. I think it's safe to say if you're looking for something that's practical and comfortable, this car is a much better choice than some of its competitors. Um, if you put your race driver ambitions behind you and you focus on how long you can go in this car, um, and at this point we've been going for almost 62 kilometers uh, and it's averaging 20.8 kilowatt hours on 100, which is, for me, it's just, it speaks volumes. You can actually go 250, 270 miles or 400 kilometers, uh, 420 maybe, and not worry about, you know, having to rush to a charger. Uh, of course, when it's winter time and you need to be constantly heating uh, the battery, we're just at the end of winter, so uh, ideal conditions really at this point. Uh, but some of the performance will drop for sure, but not by a dramatic amount, so. What a gorgeous day. It's a little overcast, okay, fine, but. Well, that's halfway. That's halfway there, um, 65.4 kilometers. Uh, ignore the, ignore the hour, because that includes the time I was talking in the dealership and setting up cameras. So um, maybe we can figure out, it was roughly an hour or so because we sat in traffic for a while. And yeah, 20.5 kilowatt, kilowatt hours on 100, which is excellent. It really is cool. Let's continue. Now I'm not one to go and talk about different design languages and I couldn't draw Hangman to save my life. So uh, I'm just gonna tell you straight up what you see from the outside of this car. This is very minimalistic. Um, the whole theme of sustainability, I get it on the inside. I don't really see it on the um, outside, but I can see that um, it does have full LED lights everywhere, um, which is not only obviously sustainable and modern and we all prefer um, LED lights, but it is also less hassle. Um, they're less likely to go wrong. So this is, in that sense, more sustainable for me than talking about curves and accents and whatnot. It's a beautiful vehicle. This one is a matte finish, uh, which I think Kia is one of those brands that really pulled it off. Looking at it from the side, uh, it's very clean. The door uh, door handles are you know flush with the body when the vehicle is closed. Very minimalistic. Uh, and also, the most important thing you need to know about this is that it runs on 19 inch rims, um, as opposed to the GT line, which I believe is 21 inches. Uh, but these 19s, they really give you all that comfort back. So here at the back, you see the uh, LED lights that really remind me of Volvo for some reason, but I think I'm not the only one. Underneath the third brake light there, you see a camera. And uh, yeah, that helps you. If you've got seven people on board, you can use your digital rear view mirror. And that's the camera that it's based on. You can lower it and you can uh, zoom in and out uh, slightly, but there's also a additional camera for your backup reverse. And so all the cameras, there's two in the mirrors, uh, there's one in the front bumper, which you can view, and there's one here at the back, which of course you can also view separately. And they put together a beautiful 360 uh, top-down view when you're navigating with this car. And may I add, this car really navigates uh, well, and it has a good turning circle. So for a seven-seater, that's really good. Let's look at the trunk. Electronic tailgate, of course, a standard. And this is the stark reality, and this is a little bit where this car confuses me. This is my usual filming gear. It's got two drones, it's got a bunch of cameras, stands, um, and yeah, the measly roughly 300 liters of storage uh, with the seven seats up is not exactly something to boast about. Uh, this has already taken most of the storage. If you're traveling with seven people, there's no way that you can do more than a backpack. So this car is great if you're taking one of each, uh, but if you're thinking about suitcases, the front, uh, it's not, it's not gonna carry anything, maybe one backpack. Um, there is no storage underneath, 
there's the tonneau cover underneath as well as a few wires um, so it's not really something that you can you know uh, choose and move around and make a little bit more space. That is probably the only negative thing I'd say about this car. Uh, I'm happy with the range, I'm happy with the comfort, I'm happy with the technology. This, however, is a little bit worrying. Now I'm 1 meter 80, so I've set the front seats, um, both of them, to sort of my liking how I'd like to sit as a passenger and as a driver. And I can say it's comfortable. I mean, my legs don't touch the seat in front of me. I'm very happy to see that they've gotten rid of this um, standard plastic up here, so it's not in your view, because that's really uh, not a welcome design choice from my perspective. You've got USBs um, in both of the seats in front of you, as well as you've got uh, this center console that moves, uh, which you can move back and forth. And it's got additional cup holders. Um, yeah, you got heated and ventilated seats and let's have a look see if you can still see me well, sunshades i'm quite glad i didn't really get time to research this um, because it gives you a, a good impression of what it's like to walk up to this car and try and get in now i see two buttons one here and one down there you don't see on the camera so in order to get into the back i'm going to press this and then what am I gonna do? I'm gonna push this back, but then it comes all the way back here. And I'm not sure if I'm still visible on the camera, but I can't really adjust this by myself. Um, it's not the easiest for sure. But again, I'm not very versed in seven seaters. You tell me. It just bounced back. Now, if I were to close this, I'm not even sure if I can get out. So, okay, well, let's, let's do it, just for the fun. Now I've got no way to move this seat forward, if anything happens, without fully ejecting the person into the front passenger seat. So, uh, yeah, you tell me what I'm doing wrong, because I've got controls here to control my own backrest, which gives us a little bit of an additional cargo space. I've also got cup holders here as well as USB-C ports and every passenger apart from this middle passenger in the middle row gets their own uh, AC unit control. Right there is the control and you've got four additional climate vents here. So that's a good, that's, that's really good. But I've still got no idea how I could move this back into the position that it was in this clicks, but I can't for the life of me figure it out. So you tell me what I've done wrong, because I'd like to learn this. Maybe room for improvement, huh? Not room for cargo. Shame. All right, so we're gonna take this one back to Kia, and um, obviously this will give us some more data on the driving. We had a look at it from the outside. Um, I can tell you this with all honesty, if you use this car as a family car, you can absolutely get by. Um, if you use this as a road trip car, the storage space is, is questionable. However, um, the value for money, in my opinion, is unbeatable when it comes to premium SUVs, electric, five, six, or seven more on the six and seven front uh, when it comes to how many you can fit inside it this is an immense value so yeah i totally get it and uh, thank you for kia um Die Fair, uh, it's hungarian uh, distributor that lent this car to me and uh, thank you for chateau Karoi uh, that uh, you know allowed me to uh, take some nice pictures and images you can check those out on the socials i'll link them in the description now these these touch capacitive buttons, there's two things that I would probably like to see improved. First of all, on a bright texture on a day where sunlight is hitting it, you can't really see what's there. I can now see where the setup button is. And the fact that you have to press it with quite a lot of force reveals the fact that this part here is probably the only squeaky part in the cabin. 
Um, yeah. Something that they could improve maybe in the GT line. I haven't been exposed to that one, but maybe in that one uh, it's different. But in this one, yeah, it's squeaky, and each time I press it, it creaks a little bit. So, yeah. Very bad quality road that we're driving on now, and I feel no particular stress, no strange sounds, very well insulated cabin. We're gonna go over this railroad crossing. You can barely hear it. This is a quality car. I don't really understand the whole cargo space situation. Not to dwell too much about it, but it's just logistically, the whole car apart from the trunk is set up for five, six, maybe seven people enjoying a long, comfortable ride. Everybody get, getting their own flavor of air. Um, you know, you've got large display here showing all the information for you good sound system comfortable seats seat massage lumbar support uh, programs and yet uh, the longest trip i can imagine going with that many people is a company trip two days somewhere in wine country everybody take your backpack with you put your laptop in it in the evening change to something more uh, comfortable next day we come back so, if you are looking for a company car and there are good incentives, yeah, this EV9 is, uh, is, is a really good deal. And if you hear anything in the back, those are my luggages, basically. Those are my, uh, my cameras and my camera bags and stuff, so, yeah. You can probably see it in the camera shake there, that this is the worst quality road that you can get. And if you check the footage, I'm not sure how visible it is, but it's just buses, trucks, and some of the locals driving nearby. So this is a beaten, battered road. And I just wanted to see what this feels like. Maybe in the future, I'll use this as a frame of reference. Um, I'll use the Chateau to see how good a car looks uh, in an elegant setting. And uh, these roads, I'll use them to uh, test the comfort. Let's see if it sees the lanes here. I don't think it does. I don't think it sees it, but I don't blame it at all. And this is why I believe we're still a few years ahead of potential self-driving on these roads. Sure, on the highway, comfortable. In that segment in the beginning where we sat in traffic, I practically had to give no input apart from keeping my hand on the wheel every now and then um, for the stretch of at least half an hour. I was able to talk, look around, notice things. It's really good. Okay, now a bus has pulled in front of us. Let's see. Yeah, it noticed it and it slowed down. It did jerk once and then it slowed down for real. But apart from this, it noticed it, kept us safe. There we go. Good. And it's showing in real time that there's a car ahead of us. Let's switch over to the digital rear view, oh, very nice, 20.4 kilowatt hours on 100, it just doesn't seem realistic, so we'll see, hopefully we'll face no traffic, I mean, from the looks of things, no traffic on the way back, so I'll be able to go at a constant 120, and then call it a day, so 50 kilometers to go, um, currently we're at 82 kilometers since we've left the dealership and we're exactly at 20 kilowatt hours on 100. Now we're once again going to go through Sekesvejervar, which is a major city. And after that we're going to hit the highway at the end of this long stretch. This is lovely. This is called Sounds of Nature. This is how the Kia puts you to sleep. And then it warns you because it's continuously monitoring me <laughs> and it's telling me now to have a coffee. I'm just relaxing as you told me. Can't even have fun anymore. Shush. Shush. How do I switch this off? Okay, please, just...
Uh, that is interesting. Um, note to Kia's um, software developers, when you design all this, thank you. Looks like that did the trick. Oh, what an interesting moment. Uh, yeah. Don't you dare relax in this Kia. <laughs> okay, I'm glad it stopped beeping. That was not fun. Just a little side note. While I was taking pictures at the Chateau um, and filming some of the B-roll for this episode, quite a few people came up and asked, oh, wow, what is this car? What does it do? How long? Obviously, what's the range? Um, yeah. I mean, it is a beautiful car, inside and out. A few plastics in between. But overall, I absolutely liked it. Um, it's fitted with all the latest and greatest. You've got, obviously, you've got, you know, uh, some connections here and some sensors uh, looking ahead. And it is fitted with cameras, so you do get many great benefits of using that. Uh, and as long as Kia can keep up with the digital side of things and start building an ecosystem, considering how large the group is and how many models there are, uh, if you could get more functions uh, and you didn't have to maybe pay a subscription for the light show on the GT Line version, from what I've heard, um, that would be great, you know? Um, if they could continue this level of innovation and build quality and um, just making not just attractive but also really reliable cars, going back to that seven-year warranty, that would be phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, I don't get to experience the fast charging, but from what I've heard, it does deliver um, nearly 200 kilowatts of charging. So you won't be sitting for long um, looking at, you know, looking at different screens. You'll be on your merry way soon enough. Now this is a half an hour check mark. Uh, we've still got 45 kilometers to go. We're at 19.6 kilowatt hours. Sure, we haven't really gone faster than the speed limit and at times a little slower, but it just goes to show if you take an eco mindset and you plan ahead and you're not in a rush constantly trying to flash your high beams at everyone on the highway, you can get incredible results out of an EV like this. I hope the uh, bumper, front bumper camera shows you every now and then the size of uh, the bumps and potholes that you have to uh, drive over and yet I'm not disturbed by anything. So in half a click we're going to merge onto the M7 motorway and I'll aim to stay at 120 kilometers an hour and we'll see what sort of consumption we're going to get currently at 19.3 kilowatt hours on 100. I'm sure it's going to go up, but by how much, we don't know. There's going to be ups and downs, so uh, it's, a good, it's a good bit of a road to test in the future. And if you do have suggestions as to what cars I should be testing, uh, let me know. Uh, I'm sure I can get my hands on a few. Okay, yes, I know somebody's in my blind spot. Thank you so much. And let's go up to 120 and then hit the adaptive cruise control. Good, let's rack up those miles and then we'll draw our conclusion. So I've increased the um, the speeds to what it says here, 124, in order to make sure it's GPS 120. I think that would be fair. I didn't do that in the first leg, but to be honest with you, we were sort of going with the traffic anyway. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna let it do the lane change as this truck just pulled in in front of me, completed the lane change. Now, if I do it correctly, I'm just gonna tap the indicator. It's checking the blind spot. 
do it again because my hands were not on the steering wheel and it's doing it by itself. Very good. Also, in case we're going to start analyzing the consumption in the future, there's very heavy wind gusts blowing across this highway. I can, I can hear it and uh, I can feel it as well. So just keep that in mind. But that's also a good test of sort of uh, the diversity of different trips and different conditions. Now directly ahead of me is a, I want to say a Model X. It's a Tesla Model X. It's not a Hungarian plate from what I can see, but clearly, clearly going a little slower than what people expect of a Model X. They're playing the long game, which is good. Play the long game. There's no point in getting there five minutes faster if you're gonna charge for 10 minutes longer, so. Okay, uh, but I need to overtake this Tesla, otherwise we'll get surprisingly good results. I know, I know. Less than 20 minutes to go, and average consumption of this trip, 20.4 kilowatt hours on 100. Somewhere in the process, 50 kilometers worth of charge has sort of varied. When we left, I'm gonna check the footage, but somewhere around 360 um, ki kilometers was the projected range. Now it's showing 208 and we've gone 110. So if you add that up, just under 50 kilometers worth of range somewhere uh, got lost in translation. Now, obviously this will adjust itself dynamically. When we left, I think it was on 62, maybe 63% what it says. Um, now it's on 38. Things to consider. But overall, no, no uh, real issues uh, with the projected range. I mean, if you can realistically do, and I do believe that you can do 400 kilometers, I think that's more than enough. Yeah, it's a big car, large battery pack, and a large amount of comfort and elegance really good car less than 15 minutes to go then 115.5 kilometers 20.9 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers we just done um, a bit of uphill driving now we're going downhill and uh, yeah I mean overall even 21 is really nothing nothing major so I think 120 is really where in Europe you should be driving on, on long range. Overall, my impressions of this car is, it is fantastic in what they sort of set out to do. It's an elegant car, it's spacious, it's big. It's the world of SUV, but without the hassle of SUV. With these 19 inch uh, rims, those chunky tires, um, you really don't feel like anything is uh, a nuisance. I think the technology on board is phenomenal. I feel like it's reliable. I don't need to worry what's going to stop working. Um, Kia's network is, is good in this part of Europe for sure, and everybody knows them for their seven year warranty. So reliability has not been an issue uh, over the past decade and a half that I've seen. Um, good quality materials, good uh, design. I mean, really uh, nothing is outrageous. It's uh, supposed to be sustainable and reflective of um, man's harmonious relationship with nature. Um, but I'm not one to talk about design, that's for sure. What I can say is I wouldn't really have range anxiety with a car like this. And for the size of it, the only criticisms I have is the six seater is probably easier to get in and out of because the getting in and out of business is a little bit of a mess. I'd like to see that in the future improve. And also the trunk space is unacceptable. Um, I'm not sure how they could get sort of around that in the future, um, knowing how much space you have towards the back of the vehicle and making it larger would be counterintuitive when it comes to having the SUV without the SUV hassles. Um, so yeah, I'll let them figure that out uh, in their own time, but I would like to maybe test the next iteration of this because this was a very good um, first experience was with Kia's EV lineup. That's it. We're back. We're back at the dealership. Um, my action camera just ran out, so I'm going to take this off and we'll be able to show you 
what the final result was. Let's have a look. Yeah, so that's the final result. It's 132 kilometers, uh, basically. Ignore the time, as I mentioned. It took me quite a while to set things up. And also, I kept the car running for a while um, at the Chateau. But it's 20.5 kilo kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers. I must say, this is an excellent car. Uh, even if it doesn't make sense as a seven seater, in my opinion, and you can't get, to my knowledge, in our region, you can't get the six seater in the non GT line version. It'd be great to have the rear wheel drive with a six seater option here, because I think that's what makes the most sense. Uh, it would be the most comfortable, most practical, despite the small uh, storage space, the small cargo. I think that would make sense. And if you can get 400, 450 kilometers out of a car as big as this, and in that much comfort, count me in, Kia. All right, thanks for uh, checking this car out with me. I promise I'll get better at these. And one day I might grow my hair out so that I can use Kia's excellent party trick. Catch you in the next one.